In this video, Elise and I are covering our five biggest mistakes we've made at work and the lessons we learned from them. We're sharing them with you so that you don't have to make the same mistakes as us. Stick around to the end of the video for a free download. What's a mistake you've made in your career? Tell us in the comments below. Hi contestants, welcome back. I'm Kayleen Cajas, the content director here at Career Contessa, a career site built for women. And I'm Elise, the content marketing coordinator here at Career Contessa. Be sure to like and subscribe to these videos, we release them every week. In this video, Elise and I are telling you about all the mistakes we've made in our careers. But, we're also going to be telling you what we've learned from them. Let's get to it. Mistake number one, feeling too indebted to a boss for a job. I don't know, for me, it was like, it kept me stuck in a box for like a really long time, because I'm doing the same thing, feeling really grateful for my job, feeling really grateful for my boss, but maybe not moving anywhere. Yeah, you were the one who brought this up first, and when I saw it, I was like, oh my god, yes! <laughs> uh, just because you feel really grateful, one, for your job, but two, for the lessons that a manager has taught you, and so maybe that boxes you in a little, little bit, and you don't actively look for other opportunities. Yeah. I think there's a way to like toe the line between the two, like obviously uh, having gratitude is a good thing, um, but <laughs> having too much of it maybe could uh, stifle you a little bit, I feel like I probably uh, did that more than once, mm -hmm. maybe twice if I'm being honest, and it kind of just set me back a couple of years, so I think it's really um, important to definitely have gratitude, but to make sure that you're recognizing the fact that you, at the end of the day you're doing the work, your boss isn't, your manager isn't, your job certainly isn't doing itself. Yeah, and for me I think that gratitude turned into putting a manager on like a pedestal and not feeling like I could have really honest conversations with her. And so what ended up happening is like I wouldn't talk to her about wanting to learn a new skill or wanting to branch out. I would just, you know, praise her because she's doing a great job. I'm just so happy. Uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so I think like maybe it like you were saying, kind of cornered you off from new opportunities because I wasn't having those like honest conversations with them. Mm -hmm. I'd say have a space of gratitude, but also be, be looking forward. Watch out for yourself first, I think. Yeah, and if your manager really is that fantastic, chances are she's going to love to help build skills and new opportunities for you too. Mistake number two, hoarding some of your skills that might not be applicable to a certain job. I ran into this in my last job in a pretty major way where I would do a lot of things with, for kind of personal development and then wouldn't share them with the team. I think because I was feeling nervous or like maybe they wouldn't like it and also I wanted to be kind of unique in my skill set. I don't know. It was a lot of that. <laughs> yeah, I think um, especially nowadays where a lot of companies are like startups or roles are kind of like uh, jiggling. Like, there's a lot more flexibility there. Yeah, yeah. so you might, as well, you, <laughs> you might as well bring them. Like, if you have design experience or social media experience or mm -hmm. writing experience, just, I think, more often than not, if you raise your hand, someone's going to be receptive. So there's really no reason to hoard them because chances are, I mean, the worst thing that's going to happen is they'll be like, you know, like, leave it to the graphic designer. But otherwise, maybe we could end up, like, completely going down a new path. I think something I learned from this is that oftentimes you're being hired because of your unique perspective and skills, and so the more you hoard those unique characteristics, the more it takes kind of the shine off the apple. So you want to make sure that you're really being upfront and sharing what you have to offer. Mistake number three, not going after reach jobs. And this is something I think slash know that women do more than men, and it's um, when you're reading through, I don't know, maybe it's because women are more detail-oriented, but when you're reading through a job post, you know, say you have six years of experience and they need, like, six years in one month, I think automatically a woman would be like, nope, I'm not qualified. Um, and I think that's something that men don't do. I know that it's even statistically proven that men will apply to jobs that they're really not qualified for. Um, I was actually just talking to a sister a couple days ago, and she's super qualified, and she's like, oh, I'm like six months short, and I was like, ugh. <laughs> I don't know, I just think if you're if you're even in the, even if you're not in the ballpark, just apply to the job, and go to the interview, and like, you know, let your personality shine, tell them what you're looking forward to doing, not, I don't, I think sometimes, like, looking forward is more important than looking back on your resume, or wherever you fall short. Mm -hmm. And I think... 
you know, we get it here, right? It is scary to put yourself out there and apply for jobs, especially in cases where, like, you might not ever hear back. That is, man, that sticks. Um, but I think you were right, like, putting yourself out there, the worst you can hear is not hear anything. That brush it off. Go. Not, not a big deal. Yeah. Like Go get that. it. <laughs> <laughs> Mistake number four, not asking for help. I think this is something I'm trying to work on all the time. I don't know what happened to me, but I feel like I grew up in this space where not a, for asking for help is seen as like, you are not contributing to the team, you're lesser than, and it just kind of compounds, and so you feel like a little island. Um, but what ends up happening when you don't ask for help is you might do a bad job, and that doesn't just reflect poorly on you, but on the people that you're trying to help overall it's kind of a i think also when you ask for help you uh, potentially get it no you will get another perspective on it so because a lot of things at work aren't just like you know black and white they're you know we go this direction this direction um, i also think asking for help and just asking for it not saying like this might be stupid or this may sound silly oh. or like is this a dumb you know question to ask you think just just ask for it everybody needs help everybody yeah, and I've never run into a single person who's like, that girl over there asked me for help. Like, that, no one does that. Why do people think that that happens? I don't know. Um, but yeah, I think something I've learned is just go for it. Ask for the help. You're going to gain a new perspective and possibly a new skill, right? Like, put that stuff on your resume. Don't be shy about it. And mistake number five, tunnel vision when job searching. Only stick into a specific industry. Mistake number five is uh, having a little bit vision when you're job searching, and that could mean like you're, you know, you've worked as an executive assistant, so you believe like, this, this is what I do, I'm looking for a job that I'm an executive assistant in healthcare, that's it, like, that's the only jobs I can look for, I think that that's really foolish, um, I think we write a lot about this subject too, where I think people qualify like their hard skills, like, you know, I can type this many words per minute, I know this program, I know and there's a lot of skills that people um, don't even think about when they're applying for jobs that can be applied to different industries. So I think maybe it's like taking a long hard look at really what your skill set looks like. And, and maybe that's not like completely professional, like the run of the mill ones. And that could open up your job search a lot. Oh, totally. I think I came from an education background, the idea of applying for marketing in like if I'm just looking at these two things they are totally disparate when you start combining those soft skills there there's more overlap than you might think so I think it's I, I guess the first step to that really is going to be uh, performing an audit on yourself I guess and figuring out where your real skills lie not just the ones that you've applied at work but maybe the ones that you've applied like your whole life even in like high school or like playing sports or doing theater or editing the newspaper like there's a ton of skills that they write off because maybe they're a little old or rusty, but I think the job search is the perfect time to put those back in action. Also, ask a buddy. Do you have someone you trust in your corner? Chances are they're going to have a glowing review of you. So maybe sit down with them and say, these are the skills I think I have. Is there anything I'm missing? What perspective do you kind of see this going? And chances are they'll have some really good insight. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right, that's it for our mistakes for now. <laughs> we hope that our insights will uh, deter you from making the same mistakes that we made. But in planning for your career, it's helpful to have a career vision. And we have a free resource to help you do just that. Download our free career vision worksheet using the link below this video. What's a mistake you've made in your career? Tell us in the comments. Did you find this video helpful? Give it a like and make sure to subscribe. We drop videos every week.